Hey everybody, welcome to Romance Happy Hour. I'm here tonight with Dawn, my co-hostess, and the authors of the Sweetest Obsessions box set. So we've got a full house. We actually have more people than we can fit on the screen. So it's uh, this is yeah. a first for us. But how are you doing tonight, Dawn? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. It's been a crazy week, right? Super crazy. I've been writing my butt off. So I finished my book, my manuscript today, Hard to Resist. It'll be out next month. So I gotta get that off to my awesome. editor. Story. Um, yeah. And I'm working on my Coast Guard class and um, I'm very excited about that because every time I read a Coast Guard book, it really, that's why I'm, I drink one glass of wine before I can. <laughs> oh, let's see your glass. Yes. That's one of the oh, glasses, nice. right? So I just made, I'm, I'm sorry, I know to, I will I'll only digress a little. I made one of these. Uh-huh, yeah, right. Recently. <laughs> it was red and her, she writes um, erotica. So I put a real zipper down here and then lace right here. She's auctioning it off like, and, and it's just amazing. It was like my favorite one. She got a real zipper on the I thought mine was your favorite one. You made me one that has like little gemstones all the yeah. way down both yeah. sides. It's cool. Kids don't want to use it. I don't want them to touch it because I'm terrified it's going to get broken. Yeah, so Dawn is very talented. You've got a bunch of cool stuff and lots of sparkles too. So, what are you working on, Miss Dylan? Oh my gosh, I just turned in a book last night at 11 o'clock p.m. Yesterday was my deadline. Um, so that felt really good to get that kind of off my off my plate for a little bit until it gets volleyed back to me with major edits, I'm sure. Um, and Sweetest Obsessions released this week. So, I mean, it's been a crazy busy week. And, um, and my kids have a whole week left of, of summer. So I've been trying to survive. We've been trying to survive each other. Yeah. And I promised my son I wouldn't say what he did this week. Um, I, so know. I but Just know if you've ever been around a 10 year old boy, um, you can probably imagine we had a really interesting day today. Yeah. I'll just say there are things he can do that in the car that his sisters can't, they have to pull over and <laughs> oh yeah, we had a very interesting day today. Oh, I know. Um, I've been on. I've been on uh, moving with with boys before. My husband, so he's introduced them all to that, and it's yeah. really interesting. It is. Yes. Is so interesting to drink. What are you drinking tonight? You said you have wine. I do have. I do have wine. Okay. That I drink you posted this week looked really yummy, and it was not a cheater drink at all. I mean, it had more than, like, more than one ingredient. I'm like, I'm not gonna let her say this is a cheater drink this week. <laughs> like, it took me an hour to get those sharks to steal. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shannon and Posey um, and Jane, who is in our lobby and is not on screen right now. Um, Dawn, the past couple times has like totally coasted on coming up with the drink recipes. She's oh, done wow. things like, um, I don't know, rum and Coke. <laughs> it was not just rum and Coke. I tried to blend that sucker. And didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see what our viewers say because I know I keep giving you crap about that. But um, no, I, I thought that it looked really cute. I liked the sharks. I don't know where you found gummy sharks, but I'm sure that they're probably all gone already. Oh, yeah. My son, I had to make sure that he didn't eat the ones that fell in. So you can't see, but there's actually six gummy sharks inside the drink because they oh. kept falling in. Gotcha. I had to fillet the sharks. Just to get <laughs> so yes, yeah. such is the life at Romance Happy Hour. This is the kind of things we talk about. That's why at the bottom I put "Good luck getting them to stay on the rim." Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I want to give Posey and Shannon both a chance to introduce themselves, and um, as we mentioned, they're both authors from the Sweetest Obsessions box set, which <laughs> released on Tuesday. So Posey, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and um, what you're drinking tonight and what you write and all that good stuff. Okay. I'm Posey Park. Um, I've been an author for around oh, four years now. And I write contemporary romance, interracial romance, and uh, romantic suspense. And the book that, um, my book that's a part of the set is Pleasurable Secrets. And oh, what I'm, am I drinking? 
<laughs> wine, red wine. Love red wine. What if you got it? What was that? What do you what do you have? Red wine. It's oh, just red wine. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Are you a <laughs> wine? <strong>. Oh, <laughs> what was that? Are you a wine connoisseur? Um, no, you know, it's so funny because my birthday was last week. And That's I had birthday. Thank you. And I had this bottle of wine for like a year. <laughs> it was just the one that I planned to open for my birthday. Don't get me wrong, I've been drinking all year, trust me. Um, but I was saving this. <laughs> I was saving this one bottle, and I don't know what I was thinking when I bought it. It has like hints of licorice in it. And Ooh. vanilla, I do not like black licorice. I'm like, what what would make me do that? <laughs> but oh well, I I was I still drink it. <laughs> I don't let it go to waste. You've been saving it for a whole year. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the great thing about wine. As long as it's still corked, it's it's good. So. <laughs> and how about you, Shannon? Okay. Well, I'm Shannon Nemechek, and uh, I write military romance, historical romance, contemporary, and I'm working on a uh, time travel romance right now. And uh, my book is Torn, and it is a military romance. And let's see, I am drinking a 44 ounce cup of Diet Coke. <laughs> this, I always, if you ever see me, I always have one of these in my hand. When um, I, I served 23 years in the army, and my um, my soldiers would bring me cups. I had them trained, you know. They were they were quite trained, and they uh, they knew to keep. Um, my nickname was Sergeant Nemo, and uh, to keep me calm and not rip their heads off, they kept me in diet soda. <laughs> so, yeah. So. That is my flavor of choice also. So yeah. I already had mine today. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna pop Jane up here so she can join the party here for a minute. And I'm gonna pop Shannon down just because I think Cozy's gonna read first. So we'll have you back in just a minute. Oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> I did it wrong. There we go. And I've only had three sips of my beverage so far tonight, Dawn. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we've got Jane here. So, Jane, welcome. I know you were listening to us when uh, everybody else was talking. You couldn't see us. But um, why don't you tell us who you are and what you write and if you have a preferable beverage of choice with you tonight. Well, I'm Jane, and I write um, romantic suspense pretty much only romantic suspense or sort of suspense thriller because apparently I'm good at writing villains. So I like to write my villains. I like to make them really interesting. So that sort of leads me down the suspense path there. Um, I'm actually in Australia. So it is actually 11.08 in the morning on Friday here. So, um, I was hoping to make it back in time. I was out running errands this morning and the bank ate my ATM card for the second time, which was really annoying. Then the bank wasn't open. I had to wait. I'm hammering on the door. Then when they finally come, they were not very helpful. So I was worried I was going to be late, but I did make it back in time. I don't have any drinks with me. I actually don't drink alcohol, but I do drink too much Diet Coke. And I actually have one in the fridge waiting for me to have um, lunch with after I finish up on here. But no drinks for me, but I am super excited to be here. Hey, we're happy to have you. I'm glad that um, you were able to get your ATM, <laughs> ATM card. Um, yes. Jane, real quick, uh, Linda wants to know if you know Stephanie London. I don't. Well, she lives in the States now, Linda. Yeah. And is she, I think she's scheduled to be, is that Stephanie London that's scheduled to be in December? 
Yeah, she's coming on later. Um, and I, I know for a fact that um, Linda won't be mad at me for saying this, I don't think, but um, Linda totally is a major fan of Stephanie's because I see her posting on her timeline all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, and I mean, Stephanie writes some awesome books too. Um, so it's definitely well deserved, but it, it's funny. So it's funny that she asked that right away. Yeah. I'm sure Australia is probably, you know, a big place. It's yeah. it's not a small country. <laughs> so. That's one of my places to go to. I have never been to Australia, Dylan, uh, but I do want to go there. That's someplace, Dawn, normally when we have people come on the show, um, Dawn always They'll say that they live, you know, in Madagascar, and she'll say, oh, in Madagascar. Oh my like with Shannon, before we started, Shannon has a, a Dotson with her, and, and you know, I have a Dotson with the same name. Don, I think, has experienced everything with everyone. I've experienced life, and I'm not lying about it either. I promise. It's all well, real. I don't think you're lying. <laughs> I just think you're lying. So. So where are you in Australia, Jane? I'm in Melbourne. Okay. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, I would love to go there too. I've been to New Zealand, but we didn't stop in Australia on the way. <laughs> Still and I will have to come visit. Well, they do have an RWA conference in Australia. Yeah. Let's do it. So it, it could be a potential write-off. We we could oh. do that. We could come broadcast Romance Happy Hour <laughs> from Australia. That would be that would be pretty cool. Karen says she's going with us. That would be great. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get things started, and I think Posey volunteered to go first, and I think it's more because she's, um, not that she's super excited, but more that she just really wants to get this part over with. Is that right? That would be correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was telling you guys, I was live for two hours. It's, it's kind of different, though. You're just yep. rambling. So. Well, our viewers are super cool and um, very, very kind. So. Yeah, they are uh, very accommodating. So yeah, don't don't be worried about that at all. We've had so many things happen while we've been on a broadcast before yeah. where um, things go wrong and we just kind of roll with it. So so yep, yeah, no no big deals here. So okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop all of us down and then Posey, we'll just let you go ahead and read what you've brought for us. And if you have any sort of setup that you need to, I don't know if you're reading straight from chapter one or if you need to set up your scene or anything, just feel free to go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, I don't have a scene set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and read a chapter from Pleasurable Secrets. It is inside the box set, Sweetest Obsession. And this is Victoria. Six months ago, I awoke in the quiet house. Two little birds chirped outside the window. My lips curled upward. Xander's side of the bed was cold. Maybe he was in the kitchen. I strolled through the airy contemporary beach house wearing only Xander's t-shirt. Xander, I called out. Walking past the empty kitchen, I stepped onto the balcony, gazing at the ocean waves. After combing the entire house, I realized he left without saying goodbye. How could he do that? He said he loved me. I sat on the floor, leaning against the wall of the counter, bawling my eyes out. Deep down, I knew it was my fault, but I needed him to share the blame. He agreed our time would end before the fall semester began. I didn't realize the intensity of my love for him. Gorgeous Xander, I've watched grow up over the years. Girls always tripped over themselves just to get his attention. He didn't want them. Xander only wanted me. I thought it was a silly childhood crush he'd get over. Not a chance. Who was I kidding? I didn't want him to get over his crush. Xander didn't join my family for Labor Day like he did in years past. He and Hayden weren't speaking. I wasn't surprised. I, compl I com contemplated texting or calling him so many times. But it was that old adage, shouldn't the guy call the girl if he really cared? By the end of September, nothing. Cal asked to hang out. I thought it would be good to get out, try dating again. It was awful. Cal parked in a parking lot. Dinner was nice. He cracked his crooked, good-looking smile. 
Yeah, it was cool. He leaned over, hugging me. I patted his back. Cal grabbed my butt. Hey, what the heck? I shoved him back. I can come up and we can end this night right. He flashed his sexy dimples. Didn't matter how gorgeous he was. He wasn't Xander. We can end our night here. Good night. I hopped out of the car and walked to my dorm. I returned home for Thanksgiving break. Hayden was cheerful, singing as he ran down the stairs. Why are you so freaking happy? I strode toward the kitchen. He threw his arm around my shoulder. I'm hanging at Xander's house tonight. My heart stopped beating. I had to pretend I didn't give a crap. The tears stung the backs of my eyes. Oh, how touching you and young Wolfman, you and, sorry, you and Wolfman made up. He chuckled, kissing my cheek. Thanks for breaking it off with Xander. Now he and I can talk about the mad chicks we're kicking it with in college. For the first time, I wanted to punch my brother in the face and really hurt him. There were other times I wanted to hurt him growing up, but this time my fingers switched. Whatever gets you losers off, I scowled. He snickered again. Check you later, sis. The second I heard the front door slam shut, I collapsed on the chair, dropping my face on the countertop, crying my eyes out like I was six years old. I was deeply affected by this man two months later. That's it from Pleasurable Secrets. Not the same thing. <laughs> hey, we're killing, we're killing. <laughs> I was gonna buy myself. What happened? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Oh, sweet. So we had one silly question from Karen. Karen's our resident. Um, I was not, and I'm trying to think of the word here. <laughs> she wants to know. Um, since today is National Potato Day, oh. do you prefer French fries, hash browns, mashed potatoes, roasted potatoes, or chips? Oh my God, I love potatoes. So that's tough, but I'll go with French fries. I do love McDonald's French fries, if I can say that. Um, yeah, I'll, hash browns, you name it, but I'll say French fries. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jane, since you're up here? Uh, potatoes, I'm a really, really picky eater. I usually tell people I'm pickier than most toddlers and um, potatoes are actually one of my favorite foods. So I'm not really sure I can pick a favorite. Like that's just too hard a question there. <laughs> I will say hash browns. And Karen, I said you're our resident clown, like class clown, like jokester. Sorry, I wasn't being Troublemaker, Don said clown, I'm not sure. At her in person, I think troublemaker is more accurate, Don. Troublemaker, there we go. See, it's the wine. It's the wine. I couldn't get my words out. That's why I can't write and drink. You know, I'm not Hemingway. I can't. I can't drink, write drunk and edit sober. I gotta write. We actually had Smashburger today. Have you ever had their fries? They have like rosemary and garlic on them, and those are pretty good. But I'm kind of a mashed potato person. I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. Potatoes, pretty much in any form. Yeah, potatoes. <laughs> oh, yeah. On that note, uh, <laughs> if anyone has any questions for Posey, go ahead and pop them in the comments. Um, otherwise, we'll go ahead and have Jane read, and we will um, definitely have plenty of time for questions at the end. So, are you ready, Jane? Yep. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and we will get everybody else down here so you can have um, the whole screen to yourself and then just let us know if there's a setup or anything or if you're just reading from the beginning or, or wherever you want to start off. Yep. Um, so my book in the set um, is my very first co-written book. So I wrote it with Amanda um, Sigrist and um, it's romantic suspense, of course. So the way that we um, split up writing the book is she wrote the hero, whose name is Carter, and I wrote the heroine, who is Rose, and also because I'm good at writing villains, I wrote our villain as well. 
So our story, I'm kind of reading something from in the middle. So our hero is um, a detective and our heroine's best friend's body was found. So that's how they meet. So this is after they've known themselves for a little bit, um, but they're kind of still in the rocky stages of things. So this is um, takes place, this scene, at our um, at the heroine's um, best friend's funeral. So I'm going to read that for you. Actually, um, besides writing, I still um, work a little bit as a preschool teacher. So I'm really used to reading aloud to people, but usually it's children's books. So not so much practice reading more adult books out loud. So it feels a little bit strange for me. All right. This was too much. She couldn't deal with this now. This was supposed to be her best friend's funeral. This day was supposed to be about Evie. And yet she had Nathan trying to force herself on her and Carter attacking him. Rose needed all of them to leave now. She just wanted to focus on her friend and saying goodbye. I think maybe you should leave, she answered Carter's question. What? He looked at her, clearly shocked. She wanted to give in, say he could stay, stay it didn't matter, say he could do whatever he wanted, but she didn't because she was tired and she just couldn't deal with this today. Besides being physically tired from no sleep in over 48 hours, she was emotionally drained. Her friend's death and everything that had happened since, including the ups and downs of her and Carter's relationship, was exhausting. Still, she knew Carter was only trying to do the right thing, and he had helped her with Nathan's unwanted advances. Who knew how far her ex-foster brother would have tried to take things if Carter and his partner hadn't shown up? So she tried to soften her tone and gave Carter a small smile. This is Evie's funeral. I don't want to think about anything else other than that right now. Besides, you have to take Nathan down to the station, right? I suppose, Carter muttered, muttered, clearly unhappy with her answer. Or Jade can take him and I can stay. After the way Carter had just attacked Nathan, Rose wasn't completely sure that she felt comfortable being around him. It wasn't that he didn't have a good reason for going after Nathan. He'd been trying to assault her when Carter came in. It was just the look on his face while he beat Nathan up. It was almost like he had become possessed. His golden brown eyes had seemed to actually darken and the corners of his mouth had turned down into this vicious snarl. It had scared her a little. She knew that Carter wasn't a violent guy, that it was Nathan's behaviour that had set him off, but she had to wonder what else would set him off. Would he ever do that to her if they had an argument? Or what if they did get together and they had kids? Would he do that to them? Rose didn't want to live like that. She knew what it was like to live in constant fear for your life and she didn't want to do that again. Or I come back later after the funeral, Carter continued, and take you home. He was like a dog with a bone. He just couldn't let it go. Not that that was necessarily a bad thing, but right now she just wanted everyone to go so they could start the service. Lincoln will take me home, she said, nodding at the door where her friend was hovering. Carter frowned like he was going to disagree. Rose could feel the tension growing inside her. She didn't lose control very often, but if Carter didn't do as she asked, she could see it happening. Deliberately, she turned away from Carter. I'm going to go and get the Reverend, she said to Lincoln. Why don't you go and see who's here, have them come in? It was going to be a large gathering, a couple of Evie's exes who she was still close with, friends from the bar, and a couple of their foster sisters. She wanted everyone who loved Evie to have a chance to come together and remember her to mourn together and to encourage one another to take a page out of Evie's book and live life to the fullest, no matter what it threw at you. Rose, Carter started. Please, she said. Begged might have been a more appropriate word. Not now. She heard Carter mutter under his breath, but thankfully he did as she asked and stalked out of the room. When he was gone and it was peaceful and quiet once again, Rose felt herself start to relax. For now, she'd had to just block out everything that had happened with Nathan and Carter. If she didn't, she was going to lose it. Maybe tonight when she was home alone in bed, she would let herself think about it, maybe even shed a few tears. But for now, she was focusing only on her friend. And that's the end of my scene. All right, we're coming back. <laughs> there you go. Actually, I probably should have brought Shannon up here. Sorry, Shannon. 
We'll get um, you up here in a couple minutes. Jane, um, we did have a request to say to ask for you to repeat the title of the book. What's the book called again? Oh, Jane, can you hear Dawn? Can you hear me? She can't hear me, can she? Can anybody hear me? I hear you. <laughs> uh oh, can Jane hear anybody? Here, I'll I'll pop her back down and up again. Let's see. Can you hear us, Jane? We can. Oh no. All right. So um we will find the name. Yep, we'll find the name of her book. Yeah. For um author questions, what's the highest total of words you've written in a day? Number of words you've written in a day, and do you write a little something every day? Is that for me or is it? Everybody in general. Oh, I write every single day. My day starts early, usually around sometimes 4 a.m. Um, or 8 once the kids are off to school. Uh, yeah. But word count, it, it depends. It can range anywhere from 3,000 words to 10,000 in a day. Yeah. I've never written 10. That's amazing. I've been doing eight for the last two days. If I'm at, if if I'm at um, Starbucks, I can do it. Really? Yeah. I can't read as much in a public place. I get really? distracted staring at people. I go with the open though. It's like 5.30 in the morning. So nobody's yeah. in there but me. <laughs> sure. Sure. I, I like to watch people. I, I mean, I go to the gym and I watch all the meatheads and then I use them in my book later. <laughs> I like that. Great. We're gonna yeah. pop Jane up here real quick. I think we're having some issues with um, for Jane, but we'll get it back here in a couple minutes. What about you, Shannon? How how many um, words a, a day do you typically write, and what's your highest amount? Well, my highest amount would be uh, right around seven to eight thousand. Yeah. If uh, like if I'm on a deadline and I have procrastinated and procrastinated and procrastinated. I can write more if I have to. Uh -huh. but seven to eight is probably the most I've written. And that was just a few months ago. I was uh, teaching at um, the Write Like a Pro conference uh, for uh, Susan Tisdale. And uh, my um, manuscript was like due that Monday. And this was a Saturday. And I still had about 25,000 words to like push out. So yeah. I, I was able to do um, right around eight, I think one day I did 8,000. But um, currently right now I try to like um, give myself a minimum. And with this manuscript I'm working on right now, it's book one of a four book series, um, the time travel romance. I've uh, set myself up, I think like, 1300 words minimum I have to get out in order to make sure that I get it to my editor when I want to get it there so that I get my arcs back in time for my uh 1300 a day yeah yeah that's oh, it wow. yeah see I I've been doing 8,000 all week and because I had this book that I had to get done and I'm like beat I'm like brain fried it does it does do that it's oh I can't imagine 13. That's crazy. And do, you, do you write word count per day or do you try to get, do you just try to get a certain number of hours per day or what, how do you set your goals? I usually do word count is, is normally, and I use Scrivener. So I have the little, you know, ticking down and, and, you know, then I'll go, okay, I hit 1300. So yeah, I can write more, you know, or whatever. And I'm kind of behind because I set myself this goal of thir just 1,300 a day. And I'm like, um, I haven't done it the last couple of days. So then I'm like, okay, well, then I got to catch up the next day. <laughs> but, you know, this week has been so utterly insane that already. And so I haven't, I've been concentrating on promo and all that, you know, so yeah. 
I haven't gotten a lot of words down on my computer yet. So, so um, Karen also wants to know for both Posey and Shannon, have you ever started a story and then decided that it's going in the wrong direction and you scratched it and started over? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but I, normally what I do is I don't really like start over. I'll, well, I'll set it as, I'll set that part aside. And so I guess, yes, I do start over, but I set that to the side because I'm like, well, that's going in the wrong direction, but I may want to use that storyline for another book Yeah. or, you know, so I just like, I've got probably up eight or nine <laughs> on my computer where I'm like, Oh, I, Oh no, I, if, or I get stuck and I'm like, mm. You know, and I just, I don't like to sit and concentrate on one story. I don't want to beat myself up over a storyline. So if it's not flowing, I set it aside because that means somebody is in my head talking to me saying, hey, I want this story out now and you've got to set that other one aside. I do that so often. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I um oh my god. I don't think I've ever scrapped a story either. Well, I don't think I, I know that I haven't. It's the same thing pretty much. I might just sit it aside and use it for another time, but um I have a story where I change like what the characters are doing. Like maybe 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 the um hero was supposed to be a construction worker and I change him into a firefighter or something like that. I have a story right now. I'm like, oh my God, I wrote 3,000 words. Am I going to just chuck it? And I'm like, no, I'll figure out a way to maneuver within this yeah. and make it right because I'm not throwing those words away. So I'll fix them. <laughs> I'll use them. Yeah. Are there any other questions at this point, Don? Uh, I don't see any more quite yet. Unless they miss We're going to Jane up here again. I'm going to pop Posey down. I think we're going to have Shannon read next. And we'll see if we can get Jane back up here with sound. Can you hear us, Jane? I can hear you. Yay! <laughs> um, did you hear the question about no. have you ever had to, have you ever started a story and then decided it was going in the wrong direction? So you had to basically scrap it and start over? I only have with one book and actually I had to, um, I like wrote about three. So when I write a series, I always plan out in just a little bit of detail, all the books in the series. So I sort of know where I'm going. And it was in my series that I just finished um, earlier this month. And when I got to writing book seven, um, the storyline that I had planned just didn't seem to work anymore. So I tried it and then scrapped it and then tried about two or three other ideas. I'd write a few thousand words, find out it wasn't working and start over. In the end, I had to take a couple of months break and I actually wrote um, another like six books um, over like six months or no, maybe a bit more over about a year, um, which I haven't published yet because then I got excited about a different series, but anyway. Um, so I did eventually come back to the story, but it was completely different than what I had originally planned. Do you, write, um, do you have word count goals per day? Do you have hours for um, in the chair? How do you set your goals? I write a, a minimum of one scene a day. So when I plan, so I have OCD. So I am like a massive planner down to like details and everything. So I usually work out um, and plan out about um, maybe about 60 scenes to get an 80 to 100,000 word book. Um, so I have to, and then sometimes some of those will drop out along the way, but I write um, at least one scene a day. So about 1500 words. And um, I'm part of a group that does a 10,000 word in a day challenge once a month. And um, that's really helped me like get going even quicker. So my best I think is about 11,200 or so is the most I've ever written in a day. That's still a ton. Like I'm 8,000 is my max. 
It's that's a lot of words. Yeah, about ten thousand in one day when I was on deadline, and yeah, I mean, that's why I just wanted to crawl under the covers and. Wait, Dylan, did you say you did eleven? I a little over ten, I think. Jeez, and that was that when you were at the cabin writing? No. Oh. No, I need to get serious about my cabin writing. It's too distracting to be right there by the lake with all the beautiful trees. Yeah. So Miss uh, Karen wants to know, do you guys use storyboards to outline or another idea, or do you have another idea that's better to outline your books? Or, or do you even outline? Because <laughs> Well, for me, I actually was a pantster, but... Now I've I'm kind of like panster slash plotter, so I'm kind of in between. I um I do all my like outlines and everything on Scrivener, so I'll you know break it all down and and sometimes I'll have like um I do have like um good notes and stuff on my on my iPad and my Apple Pencil and I'll sit there and I'll write stuff out, but then I you know, circle it and it turns it into text and then I throw it into Scrivener or whatever. That's if I'm, you know, out and about or whatever, you know, and, uh, but I keep my iPad with me all the time for ideas and stuff. If yeah. I see them, Oh, I got to write that down real quick, you know, kind yeah. of. Thing. So, yeah. um, so, uh, Jane real quick, what was the title of your book? Um, it's drowning in you drowning in you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, Sarah, I don't. I, just so you know, you can get this um, also in the sweetest obsession box set. You can get all these ladies' books. I don't know if you heard that, um, but they're all in the same box set released on Tuesday. Just wanted to to re up that just in case anybody popped in recently. But it just got released on Tuesday, right, ladies? Yes. <laughs> And I don't know, um, Sharon or Jean, do you have your covers handy or yeah. do you not have them? Do I have I, my cover? People have asked um, if you have your covers. They wanted to see what the cover of your particular book or story was. If you don't have them handy, because I know you're probably reading them just off of your computer or whatever, um, we can put them in the comments after the show is over. Yeah, I can. I can bring mine up real quick. Okay. Um, I don't have mine on me, but I can grab my phone and hold it up from on my phone if that's helpful, but it's in the other room. <laughs> Just give me one. I have a student's reading. You can run in the other room and grab it. <laughs> I got to scroll through my phone pictures here real quick. <laughs> well, that's okay. I mean, we can pop them up in the comments because we have some amazing graphics. That are I'm, so, I'm so proud of my cover because well, Nathan Hainline, he's a he's a model. He's one of the models, you know, in the romance community, and he's also a veteran. He's a former infantry guy, and uh, he um, he was my model. He actually he does a lot of photography. He does his own uh, own pictures, and uh, he's he's really good. And this. If I could ever find it. What the <laughs> door, Shannon? I don't have to write that. You know what my problem is? I have too many pictures of my dog. Uh -huh. Lift it a little what's bit. His, what's there you, there you go. There. And and these are all available if you um go look at the sweetest obsessions page, you'll see pictures of all of the different covers and everything for all the individual books. Shannon, are you a rom vet? I am a rom vet. So am I. Are you? Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Yep, I sure am. Yeah, I, what did you say his name was? What's that? What did you say your model's name is? Nathan Hainline. How do you spell that? Nathan. Yeah. And H. Hainline is, taking oh, Hainline is H A I N L I N E. Okay. I can't ever find any models that fit like the the military. Like they're either like too overly weird looking, like with the big. Oh, Nathan, Nathan is Nathan is awesome. He yeah. he really is, and he he's cheap too. <laughs> <laughs> cheap. I think what you're saying, Shannon, is that he's a very good value. 
Yes, very good. Though. I like cheap better though. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look them up because I need to look. Hey, I'll send you. I'll send if you want. I'll send you his link or his uh yeah. his yeah. Facebook. Linda's teasing me. She says I'm I'm like being a stalker or something. Is that what you're saying to me, Linda? Well, you look little kitty, though. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm old, though, so that's like, that's kind of creepy, you know? <laughs> but <laughs> And Karen and I would totally use my husband, but the military says I can't use active duty military faces on my book covers. I've already talked to them about that. <laughs> <laughs> Cut his head off. What's that? Cut his head off. Go right yeah, here. Yeah, I was just like this. I'm just down. Yeah. He's gonna, he, he, he applied for a drill instructor again, so he's he's planning on getting all ripped if he does. Because he's he's got a good shape about him now, but he's wanted to get like like ripped. If yeah, he, if I was. I was a recruiter for four years, so I went. To oh yeah. Yeah, right over there near those guys. No way I would ever do that. I got offered to go. Back when I was a youngin and stuff. Yeah, yeah he was a, he was a, um, a drill instructor before, and now he's um, hopefully going to be one for his last tour. So he re-retired about three years. So exciting! It's nice. Tell him I said it's nice. Trying to circle back to talking about romance. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure that we have time for you to read, though, Shannon. Um, yeah. So, are you ready? Do you have your yeah. your selection ready? Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to you. And do we need a setup for this or anything? Or are you going to start just in chapter one? Actually, I'm just I'm going to start kind of like at the epilogue a little bit, and then go into the first chapter some. So, yeah. Okay. At the prologue? Yeah, yeah. It's oh, like okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's in the middle of the prologue because I don't want to give away all the prologue prologue and stuff. So got it. I'm okay, to... we will turn it over to you. And then um for those of you watching, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them in the comments and we will bring everybody up after Shannon is done reading and you'll have a chance to get all your questions answered. So all right, Shannon, it's all you. Okay. Okay, now this is from my story, uh, Torn in the Sweetest Obsessions box set. And uh, it starts out um, in Afghanistan, uh, Fob Anaconda, October 31st, 2012. Tuck stood outside, or Tuck, ugh, I haven't started out very well, have I? Tuck stood just inside the doorframe, watching the soldiers as they milled around the fob, some packing their trucks, while others stood outside smoking and joking. The smiles on their faces, that, that knowing that home was just a few days away made him smile. You can always tell a, a soldier's smile if they're short. Tuck, on the other hand, didn't have much to come home to, but he did have his parents his lab chief, and his truck, all in the care of his parents in Alabama. He was ready to get back. Although he loved flying combat missions, he was ready to head back to Fort Rucker and teach. He had more than earned his time in combat zones and was ready to sit back and teach the newbies. Maybe even try to talk to Riley in person and see what it is that he did to make her leave. That was by far what ate at his soul. How could something go, something so good, go so wrong so quick? It continued to echo in the back of his mind. If he didn't talk to her, he would regret it for the rest of his life. Tuck's attention wavered for a moment when he heard his buddy Taylor yell across the compound, dragging a cart behind him. Hey, Chief, can you help, can you help me over here? Tuck laughed but turned and reached it just inside and grabbed his ACH and flopped it on his head as he ran towards Taylor. Incoming! Those were the last words he heard before the lights went out. When he came to, it was the screams of the fellow soldiers and the gunfire that snapped him out of his daze. Just enough to look around. The fob was destroyed and, bodies of, and the bodies of three of his buddies lay 
where they once had stood. At first he thought it was a dream, but when he tried to get up, he couldn't move. He felt a burning in his torso, in his legs, and the excruciating pain that encompassed his entire body. Am I dying, he thought. Those were the, that was the last thought he had had before he passed out. When he woke again, it was only for a moment. He was strapped into a helicopter, and his thoughts were, this is a dream, as he passed out again. One year later, Fort Rucker, Alabama, Tuck pulled into the aviation center, parked his truck, got out, and grabbed his cane. As he headed to the door of the training center, an Apache flew over and he stopped. Looking up, he watched as the chopper flew away. Every time he stopped by the training center, he got the same feeling, an aching, desperate feeling of emptiness. He needed to fly. It was what it was all he really had. And this, excuse me, <coughs> and this was now his sixth trip back to the aviation center since leaving Walter Reed and coming back to Rucker. Hopefully number six is the charm, he thought, and Riley would come out and speak to him. He hadn't dared hope too much, but he was still willing to give it a try. If it didn't work this time, then he would just leave her alone. He didn't have much longer in, left in uniform and the army didn't need broken pilots and he, was broke, and he was too broken to serve. So he would soon be moving to Atlanta to take a job as an executive helicopter pilot, a job his father had called in a few favors and had gotten him into interviews. It was Hanson Technologies that had finally taken the chance and hired him. He had five days in a wake up left in uniform. Then he would be Mr. Tuck Frazier and no longer Chief Frazier. That would be the hardest. When Tuck reached for the door, he opened it and was met by a military police officer. Can I help you, Chief? The MP asked, standing between Tuck and the entrance of the training center. Don't think so, Sergeant, unless you can point me to where Chief Andrews is. I'm sorry, Chief, but Chief Andrews isn't seeing anyone at this time. Can you tell me why, he said? I'm not sure, Chief. Besides, I've been ordered not to allow any personnel into the building that requests to see Chief Andrews. Tuck could feel a mix of emotions begin to overtake him. He wasn't sure if it was anger or sadness or a little of both. All right, Sergeant. Thank you. Roger, Chief, I do apologize. It's all right, Sergeant. You're just doing your job. Have a good day. Who are Chief? Tuck turned around and headed back to his truck. It made no sense. Why would no one be allowed to see Riley? It wasn't just him. The way the Sergeant had described it, no, no one was allowed to see Riley. As, he, as much as he wanted to see her to get the answers, or at, at the very least, get some semblance of closure, it appeared that that wasn't going to happen, at least not any time in the foreseeable future. Tossing his can into the passenger seat, Tuck started his truck and pulled away. As he looked back at the building, he could, he could almost swear he saw Riley standing in the front of the third floor window watching him. Done. <laughs> All right, we're coming back. I'm gonna bring Posey back up here too. Now so I'm curious. I mean, heck, yeah. That looks that sounds good. Oh we're cool. <laughs> you do have a couple we do have a couple questions. Um how did you guys all meet up to be on the box set and and something else. Answer that one <laughs> for the other one. Well, it was a, a call for uh, authors for the box set. And uh, I was actually a late addition. I didn't get added on until actually, Chris, I think it was Christmas day last year. You know, it was like, yay, Christmas present. 
you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was it was a call. I had um, I hadn't I had expressed interest, but hadn't put in for it, and then got asked because they had already filled up or whatever. And I was not really on a wait list, but I had expressed interest. And so they asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, pretty much um, back in September, I, it's Rebecca's group. I forgot the name of it. But um, once I saw the post asking if authors wanted to be a part of the set, I was like, oh, my God, yes. This would be so amazing. I was so excited. My husband thought I was crazy, I'm sure. So I was like jumping up and down and like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And then, you know, you you type, yes, I, I would love it. And then you get the um the email that says you've been chosen. You're like, oh my God, it's so amazing. So yeah, <laughs> I was pretty excited. Yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a um, freebie box set with Rebecca. Okay. One of Rebecca's things. Okay, so I found it. So it's, do any of you keep a pad by the bed in case you wake up with an idea? Post-its. Post-its. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry. Uh, do you keep something by the bed to write down if you have an idea in the middle of the night? Oh, uh, my phone. Yeah. The little notepad on my phone. I do that sometimes. I, I, got, I have that bad. Like, it, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll just type it out. So in the morning, when I start my, my writing, I can jot it down. I did that before I took a nap today. Don't judge me. <laughs> so to add on, do any of your notes make sense? Because I've had these dreams that in my dream, I think this will be an amazing book. And then I wake up and think, no, it won't. <laughs> For me, it's like the character just said something out of the blue. And I was like, oh, my God, that would be amazing. And it's, I almost forgot that I had until you guys just mentioned it. So I'm happy you mentioned it. But I sure wrote that down. And, and I'm going to add it to my book, um, nice. the book that I'm working on now that's supposed to release next month. So, yeah, yeah, I do that all the time. Nice. All right, do we have any more questions? The question for Cozy, um, when, when she was not on the screen, wasn't it? Someone wanted to know what was the hardest book or which one of your books is the hardest for you to write? Which one is the hardest to write? Oh my goodness. I want to say Hidden Witness 4. It's 700 pages. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's the mafia romance. It's the, um, so you know, you. I talk about each brother or um, or a cousin or something in the, in the series. And sometimes you just get stumped. You know, and it's like, it's sometimes, a lot of times I don't, like I'm a pastor, so I just write from chapter one to the end. And, but I got stumped and I was like, oh my goodness, this book has to release at the end of May. I need to get it together. So like I'll stand up and I'll walk around and like, I'll like kind of talk to myself with the character and I'm like, okay, yep, that works. We can do that. And and I'll just keep going. But yeah, that was the hardest book. I did not intend for it to be 700 pages at all. It was supposed to be more like 80,000 words. And I'm like, what happened? He just wouldn't shut up. So <laughs> it just ended up being a lot longer than I intended for it to be. That was my hardest book. Cozy, Karen wants to know, how long did it take you to write 700 pages? Ooh, um, two months. Really? I write, yeah, I, I write pretty quick and I write multiple projects. I'm working on like five books right now. So, yeah. so are you a writer? what's that? Are you a full time writer or do you yeah. have the, the dreaded day job as well? No day job since last year. I'm nice. sorry to think about it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm able to write. That's why I'm able to write all day long mm -hmm. if I can. Yeah. How about you, Shannon? You're, you're retired from the military, right? Are, are you a full-time yeah, I just sit back in my sweats and my uh, <laughs> my sleeping pants. I don't have to worry about wearing no uniform or putting no boots on no more. Although that does make it quite difficult at times because then I have to decide what I want to wear when I never had to worry about that in uniform. Yeah, I, yeah, I had my granimals around all the time, so... You know, I never had to worry about picking no clothes out. So, Shannon, I live on Fort Eustis right now. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dylan came and visited me. About a did. Month ago, right? Yeah. So we were, like, <laughs> on our way to North Carolina, we stopped by. Oh, nice. Snuck me on base. Yeah. I didn't even have to go through the pat down or anything, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a buddy over at Fort Eustis. Who's, uh, he's a Bodie, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. My husband thought about, my husband's an electrician for the Coast Guard. And um, he thought about um, applying for one of these jobs here because on the on the boats as a civilian, as a GS mm -hmm. member, because it's exactly what he does. Yep. But, yeah. Yeah. A boating. I didn't know that that word existed until I moved to Fort Eustis. Yeah. <laughs> we got <laughs> we Army had boats until yeah. I was a recruiter and was uh, one of the guys I recruited with was a boating. Yeah. What well, What did you do in the military? Huh? What did you do? I was a supply sergeant. Okay. Yeah. My um, cousin is a pilot. So when you were talking about Fort Rucker, right? Yeah. Like that's her pilot school, right? Yep. Correct. Yeah. Cause she was down there. She just got graduated like a year or two ago and she's in uh, Tacoma right now. So, ah. Yeah. Yeah. But she's like their golden girl and like, <laughs> she doesn't talk to me anymore because she's we're just enlisted, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I want to get Jane back here real quick. Yes. Could I pop me down or are you down, Don? What You can pop me down. That's cool. I'm drinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A couple minutes. I know you'll all miss her. All right. We'll get Jane back up here for just a couple minutes. Um. If you have any other questions, let us know. I wanted to ask um, all of you if you have any signings coming up or if you're going to be at any events that we need to know about. I have none until next year. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I kind of, I was going to a lot of them there for a while, but then I just been concentrating on writing and I didn't like apply for any of them. For the rest of the year, so you know. I have um, tempted and tantalizing next month, um, September twenty first in Staten Island, New York. Nice. Um, yeah, and I think there's a few of us going. Renee will be there. Um, with Michelle will be there. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. That's the only signing I have this year, and then I'm going to 20 books to 50k um, in November. So I'm super excited about that too. Oh, fantastic! I will see you there. Ah, yeah, that's right. You are going. I've been like stalking 20 books groups and trying to see who I know who's going. So I'm like so excited. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Jane. No, I've never actually done a signing before as a reader or an author, but I don't think we have as many here. Like there's not that many and we're so far away from everything else down here, the bottom of the world in Melbourne. Um, so no, I've never been to one, but hopefully I will go to some soon. I don't have anything. I don't even know what's coming up um, in Melbourne, but as I know there was one fairly recently, like last month or something, but um no, I haven't been to any, but hopefully soon. And what is next for each of you? Do you have any other books coming out before the end of the year? Or what's, what's next? I just have one book coming up this year left. I write a, um, I love Christmas and I um, do a Christmas series and I just release one book a year. So I have that coming out December 1st, but um, next year I'm changing my publishing schedule and I'm doing from here on out a five book series every year plus my Christmas book. So I already actually, cause I write ahead. I cannot be like you people that can like write and then publish it like, yeah, yeah, I'm working on it now. I'm publishing it next month. I'm like working on my books for next year now. So I'm um, excited to start a new series after the series I just finished has been going for so long. So be good. Is your book in the box set, is that part of one of your series or is that a standalone? It's going to be part of a series. So Amanda and I are hoping to maybe do like one book every year or maybe two just depending on 
like our individual publishing schedules as well. So I also have a um, charity anthology project that I'd like to work on next year. Very cool. How about you, Shannon? What's next for you? I um I actually have a uh, book one of the, the time travel romance series that I'm working on. That releases uh it's actually on pre-order right now on um Barnes and Noble and Apple and that and um Barnes and Noble, Apple and Kobu right now, and it will go on pre-order for Amazon September sixth. It it um I have a cover reveal actually um next week uh the 28th and uh for book one and it releases uh december 5th so you're gonna see a whole lot because i have a whole lot scheduled um for promo and such but um each book will release six months from each other so i got december and then june and then december again and i think june all the way into 2020 on that series and then I'll do, um, I have outlined or started the plot um, book three of the uh, Aries team, which is Torn is, Torn is book two of the Aries team um, uh, series. And then, uh, well, book one has got, um, uh, everybody calls him Hurricane Cop, Dan Rengering or whatever is on book one. Um, but yeah, so I'll um, finish up that, and then I have to do book three, finish up writing book three of my Warranted series. So I have like, yeah, yeah, I've got, yeah. And the characters gotta stop talking to me because I, you know. <laughs> no, you can't have your story yet. <laughs> Rosie, what's next for you? Oh boy. Um, release your Relentless Chase 4. Um, it's going to be a week late, unfortunately, but it should release um, September 3rd. I um, also have Assassins and Mob Wise Couples Retreat releasing in the end of September. Um, Hidden Witness 5 in October. Uh, I'm a part of Emerging Temptation. I'm writing a firefighter story, Blaze, that releases in January. And that's it for a moment. What was that? I'm sorry. I just said, oh my gosh, busy. <laughs> Y'all are yeah. busy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm one of those who, uh, I don't have release dates. My, my readers know that they're just ready to purchase whenever I release. I'll say the last minute, okay, it's releasing tomorrow or something like that. Yep. <laughs> it works, it works. Fantastic. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming on tonight. I know we're kind of out of time, um, but thanks for coming on and representing the box set. I know I was sad that we couldn't get all of the authors that participated on here, but um, you can see that I had a hard enough time just juggling for three of you. Um, <laughs> so I appreciate it, and we'll definitely get some information in the um, on the Romance Happy Hour page about you know the links and all that. And um, I know we normally do a giveaway, so I'm sure our viewers are wondering what's up with the giveaway this week. And I'm gonna go ahead and post it in the um, Romance Happy Hour group, because as we've been telling everybody, we're moving all of our giveaways into the group instead of the page. So keep an eye out for that. I'll get that posted tonight. So um, I am gonna go ahead and pop all of you down so that I can get Dawn back up here so she can say goodbye. So I don't know if you guys just want to kind of say goodbye. And Bye, thanks so much Bye. for having us. Thank you so much. All right, let me get Dawn back up here real quick so she can say goodnight. Because we got to let Dawn have the last word, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. There you go. <laughs> You're back, you back, Don. I'm back. So I just wanted to give you a chance to say goodnight. And what are you working on? You just finished your book. I did, yeah. So now and I'm working on my Coast Guard class and um, and then edits. And then and the, um, Coast Guard class, for those of you that are wondering, she's putting on a class for authors on how to accurately write Coast Guard characters. Because, because yeah. 
Yeah. You don't have to say anything else, Don. Don wants to promote accuracy in the way that uh, members of the military are represented in fiction. So yes. yes. So, but I did want to say that Dylan and I tossed around this idea of co-authoring. You constantly are spilling secrets, and you need to be quiet right now. I am, but but I was going to ask them, like, do they think that you are better? Like, do they like your male characters or your female characters? Better? Oh, I see where you're going. Okay, I was going to say, don't make people pick sides because no. I because I will go out there and rally and blackmail people. <laughs> No. Okay. no, I was going to say, should Dylan write the female character or the male character? The hero or the heroine? Which one should Dylan write and which one should I write? So. Okay, we'll, we'll throw a poll up on the page and see yeah. what people think. Yeah. So, sounds good. I'm not going to spill the beans yet, though. No, like, don't how dare. dare. You, already, you already spilled the beans about my series that's coming out next year. That's what happens when Dawn has more than one glass of wine. She gets loose-lipped. Okay, so loose lips sink ships. I know that, but you got to tell me what I can't tell. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I need to know what's top secret and what's not. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. From now on, I just won't give you secu security clearance. <laughs> okay, don't give me any security clearance. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, we should probably say goodnight. All right, sounds good. We'll talk to you next time. Um, I did not look it up before we I, I've been crazy with having three children home. Okay, um, I looked it up. Let me pull oh, up. Oh you did okay tell everybody who we have coming up next time. Amy Dawes and Diana Stewart. Awesome. Yes. I look all right and we will get information about them up on the website so you can um, sneak a peek and get some information and we'll see you next time. Bye. All right and we'll both be a little more sane because our kids will be out of the house next what? time. School. Cool. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited <laughs> for school. All right. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Bye.